Happy birthday to my father. He would have been 67 today. Unfortunately, on February 5th, he passed. It's been hard on our family. Um, just, you know, we miss, we miss him. My father was a very stand-up individual. He, um, very honest, taught me to be the best person that I can. Anything that you see, any good concerning me goes back to him and my mom too. But as far as like, as an example, I had a direct example as a man, which is my father. Um, he gave up a lot for my family, you know. He was a musician as well. He's the reason that I got into music. Um, and also the reason that I play the, the, the main instrument that I'm known for. Some of you guys um, probably never heard the stuff that I've done music-wise, but um, <sighs> my dad actually recommended me to play the bass because they didn't have any guitars um, in the orchestra class. And the thing is, actually February 5th is my um, 31st anniversary in playing that bass. I've been playing since 1988. But thanks to my dad, you know, um, who knows what would have happened if I didn't play it. I've been on tours. I've, you know... It's opened up a lot of doors, even with stuff that I do in my community with, when it comes to music. My dad's to, to um, <laughs> I don't want to say blame, but to get the credit for that just by recommending. And also by, by um, with some of the programs that I have, being a direct inspiration for that as well. You know, the, the program that I host with a lot of youth, um, I um, was directly influenced just as a kid. Um, just as a kid, like watching my dad and his friends play in the park and how my dad would, you know, when we have our family outings, it was funny. You know, my dad like, um, would just go, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, to be honest, I don't know if he knew some of the cats or not, but he would go randomly park at the park and jam with cats. But he, you know, he, he was used to doing that with his friends and, you know, that was an inspiration as a kid wanting to just do that. And, um, you know, he taught me my first guitar chord. Um, I was in his band. My mom and dad had a, a, a group uh, that was called Foolish Things. Um, people might label them gospel, <laughs> but they weren't. It's kind of hard for me to describe what that band sounded like. If you like stuff like... Sade meets jazz fusion meets like Joan Ar Armatrod and like folk stuff meets like funk rock and roll everything it was all that you know they um had pretty much um Christ-centered lyrics because you know they were concerned about the you know the people around us you know like and just the world in general like I, di I didn't grow up in a home where it was like oh you know like just fire and brimstone type stuff it was more creative you know my, my my siblings are all creative too but always my mom and dad like you know taught us and you know just how all that stuff came from the most high you know and they by example even more so you know my dad back in the 70s was in a group called the fistful of soul um and you know, I think they were just, they were a vocal group, but they, you know, had a backing band, which for all you true funksters out there, um, became the band Kiddo. They they were actually the backing band for my dad's soul group called Fistful of Soul back in the 70s. And, and if you guys don't know who Kiddo is, look them up. They were from Long Beach back in the very early 80s. Um, my dad also knew people like Gloria Jones, who was married to Mark Boland from T-Rex. She also had a hit called Tainted Love, which everybody knows by Soft Cell, the, the new wave group Soft Cell. But Gloria did the song first. 
Um, he did also a session for Marvin Gaye. Um, name was not credited, unfortunately, him and a few guys that he knew. And he was paid in Jack in a Box. And it's not to throw shade at Marvin Gaye. You know, the, <laughs> I've had people do that with me, you know, being a musician even now. Uh, you know, that struggle is real as a musician. I'm, I'm, I'm serious, you know. Um, there's a lot of connections. And my dad knew people, you know, from bands like War and, you know, um, just, just a lot of cats, man. Like a lot of cats, like his friends vouch for that because back in the 70s all that stuff like you you had people that were around LA you know like one of my dad's friends used to room with David Bowie at one point you know like these guys were there you know they were around at that time it was not yeah they were kind of known but like I mean they were known but like they were just LA kind of was kind of the epicenter of that and it was almost like if you're a musician during that time in certain circles it wasn't like you know like all starstruck, you know, they were just kind of regular people and kind of trying to see what the pulse of LA was like, especially if they were from a place like England, you know, like Eric Burton came out here, you know, and, and kicked it with guys from war. Those guys are from Long Beach and Compton and all that. But getting back into my, what my father, you know, having a, a, a young, uh, being young and, and having a family, cause him and my mom were very young, very early twenties, actually late teens when they had my uh my sister my older sister and they had me in their very early 20s you know my dad was just like hey you know I gotta raise my family you know and and just kind of got out of the whole music scene thing but it's not like he left music because that you know music was around me when I was a kid I mean if it wasn't albums you know it was instruments you know my dad like um had guitars and Casios around us, you know, like, and, you know, just, there's music always around, you know, um, and we remember a lot of our moments by music. He would take us on outings and we'd be listening to everything from, um, the stylistics to Sade to Jethro Tull, you know, and everything in between, you know, my dad was the first person to, um, tell me about groups like Emerson, Lake and Palmer. And I think, my earliest remembrance of Led Zeppelin was him on the freeway <laughs> playing one of their songs, you know. He knew, he kind of he kind of was amazed that I was getting into like a lot of 60s and 70s music, you know, because in the 80s it was like mostly new wave and hip hop that was popular. And so he was just like, huh, how are you finding out about all this? And then he just started telling me about groups plus you know, me seeing his album collection was very eclectic. You know, him and my mom listened to a lot of different stuff. And, um, you know, they had their own musical group, which I actually was their first bass player. And one of the things I remember my dad telling me was um, I totally, you know, I totally had a bass that he got me that was fretted. And then you could take the uh, uh, the neck off and make it into a fretless neck. <laughs> He thought, you know, I thought, both of us thought that I would have the songs even if I switched the neck because, you know, I was used to playing upright bass. And I totally fouled on the on the live show. <laughs> like it was a it was a snowball. It was it was a it was a it was bad. And and my mom, you know, she didn't want me to be embarrassed, so you know, she didn't want me to, you know, go out there the next year. My dad was like, nah, he'll do better. And sure enough, the next year I did, you know, my mom wasn't ashamed of me, but she just was like, you know, nurturing to the fact of how I felt more like kind of she didn't want me to, to feel, you know, ashamed, you know, <laughs> but I have loving parents, man. I, I, um, my dad, like, and I also, we always talked, you know, I, I can say that I was close to my dad. Even in times when we bumped heads, you know, I, I still had a relationship with my father. You know, he was in the home. I had a two-parent family. You know, a lot of people are always talking about black kids in single-parent houses. Not all of us grew up like that. And and I've, I have not only had two parents in the home, but, you know, they were nurturing. You know, like, I mean, they, they, they did the best that they could with what they knew and they learned along the way trust me this is my dad back in the 70s right here you know me and my dad 
on one of our outings, chilling, you know, family. I think that was for my birthday. You know, me and my dad, um, my dad eventually, you know, I wish that he would have um, at least made a demo of him and my mom's group. They had a lot of great songs, a lot of really cool, innovative stuff, stuff that sounds like what people call Neo Soul now. They were doing that stuff in the early 80s. I'm serious. It just, it's hard for me to even describe what that group was. I wish that we had recorded. I told my dad if he ever wanted to record some songs, you know, but he never really got to it, you know. Um, but some of my bands, my dad actually played in too. Uh, I was in a band called Create. It was basically the, um, it was, it was all improv, but we also, um, had just things that we did in the community as well. My dad played in that band. He also played in my punk band, which is what you're looking at right now, Millions of Shaved Heads. And I asked him, I'm like, are you serious? He's all, hey, you know, I want to try something different, you know, um, and yeah, it was, we played that. I think this is the last Millions of Shaved Heads gig that we did two years ago um, at some dive bar in, in Long Beach where I live. This is, you know, we're on an outing for my nephew's. I think it was my nephew's birthday. I'm not sure. Yeah, it was. I'm playing paintball. And my dad, he's like in the back with the red shirt on. I'm looking like an eye, <laughs> like some kind of... <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm. I'm. Not, it was funny what he, my my dad was saying. What I looked like, just said I looked like a, an ISIS member. Um, sorry, that was me and my dad just chilling, um, being silly. You know. Yeah, my dad and I also had um, a food vlogging thing. Um, called Food G's. If you look, I didn't really post a lot of it on YouTube. I think there's only one video on YouTube. But, you know, my dad introduced me to a lot of different things culturally. You know, like he always took us around LA, took us to different places to eat. My mom and dad is the first people that introduced me to Indian food and like, you know, Middle Eastern food and stuff like that. My dad and I were the only ones we were the only ones that would just be willing to try different stuff. So we would just go out to different food places and film that and film the business so we could promote them, you know. Um, and we we were called the Food G's. Um, and my dad made that up because our last name, you know, the beginning of our last name is a G. And plus, he just thought it would be funny to call it that. This is a performance art piece that I was in. My dad played in. He played in a few of my performance art pieces. This is him just chilling with his synthesizer. You know, this is the first Food G's um, restaurant that we went to. Um, I think, was it? I think it may have been. I'm not sure. Um, I thought this was the Belizean place, but it might be another place that is closer to us, but this is like one of the first Fuji's that we did. Um, my dad at the show, my dad played in some, some group. I, I forget what they were called, but they totally, um, were on a whole nother thing. You know, my dad's on the left at my baptism, um, into the Orthodox church. You know, him and my mom, <laughs> they're kind of worried about me because it's a little bit more traditional than what, you know, we grew up with as far as like our our faith is concerned. And they didn't want me to get caught up in just the traditional aspect of it. You know, my mom and dad were all about the spiritual part of what we believe. And, and to be honest, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be in the Orthodox Church because of just those things that I learned from them that was... um a step to my journey into the Orthodox church, you know? Um, and I still look at it as a part of what I've learned in life and being in the Orthodox church confirmed what I learned from my mom and dad. So it was great having them there. It was an early baptism too. My dad and I at the Long Beach fish market, you know, 
That's my dad, man. This is like the old church that we went to. And I think they used to store all the um, the, the studio items like for um, the praise team <laughs> at a store. Um, so we would have to take that back and my dad would haul that stuff. You know. But, you know, it's 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 a trip, man. I'm a, I'm missing my father, man. My father taught me a whole lot of things, man, when it came to um, ethics, when it came to, of course, music, when it came to food, when it came to people in general, not to look at everybody as the same, but to look at them as individual people. And I grew up that way. I grew up around, you know, he was the first person to take me through the Bible and show me you know, black genealogies in the Bible, you know, like that, that was really important. You know, he had that understanding of, of, of our faith, which is why I, I can't agree that Christianity is a white man's religion because I didn't grow up that way. I didn't grow up learning it that way. Um, he taught me a lot about everything, man. A lot. He sacrificed a lot for us. You know, even to the point where he, I'm sorry, <laughs> you know, he, he cared so much for us. Like, I think that was one of the things that really kept him, even though he went through so much health wise, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> he definitely is going to be missed every day. I'm going to miss my father. <laughs> no matter what I'm sorry <laughs> memory eternal to my dad you know <laughs> he, he ran the race well and when you know even with things that I'm not saying everybody's perfect but even through that he would acknowledge, acknowledge that as well and would learn from such you know and I, I could only wish to be even half the man that he was. You know, I, I don't have my own kids, but <laughs> I had the greatest example for a father that anyone could have, you know. <laughs> Memory eternal. I just thought I would share that with you guys. Peace and blessings to all y'all. And, you know, get with your parents. If, you, you know, you have either one of them or both. And just spend as much time as you can with them. You know, because you never know. You never know. <laughs> have a nice day.